30 minutes of mostly useless Animal Crossing facts that you probably don't need to know, but you'll be glad that you know afterwards anyways. Ready, set, go. In the original Animal Crossing games, guns were actually present. Copper originally had a gun in a holster and in Wild World and in City Folk. He was changed into a castle guard, and then later on, when he was brought back to being a police officer, his gun was changed to a police baton instead. Booker, on the other hand, never had a gun or a baton, and uh, I probably wouldn't trust this guy with either of those anyways. Also, in the Chinese version of Animal Crossing, Booker's name translates to Uncle Policeman B, which is fantastic. Gina Biro is an Animal Crossing villager that only appeared in the Japanese-only Animal Crossing E+, and he looks absolutely terrified to be there, and he never appeared in an Animal Crossing game again. In some of the older Animal Crossing games, there was a recurring event where a cat would get lost and couldn't find her mom, and you could help this cat find her mom, which was kind of a cool, unique event that no longer is in New Horizons. Similarly, there was another cat who couldn't find her face, and you had to draw the face for her. What a weird time to be alive. Some of you may have heard the infamous My Body is Ready meme, which actually comes from Nintendo, thanks to Reggie fils -A, a former president and chief operating officer of Nintendo of America. This meme actually came from Nintendo's press conference at E3 2007, and Reggie was introducing the Wii Fit, a fitness game for the Nintendo Wii console. <laughs> Part of this presentation was pretty amazing. It just started out with this. My name is Reggie. I'm about kicking ass. I'm about taking names and we're about making games. As you can tell, this quickly spread across the internet. My body is ready. And became a huge meme. Years later, when Reggie was promoting Animal Crossing New Leaf, though, he was showing his town in Animal Crossing. And after a couple of years of this being a huge meme, he brought the meme back in a new form. I can even work out and bench some weights while listening to music on my turntable. That's enough working out for today. My body is ready. Man, Reggie truly was the best back in the day. Digby and Isabel are twins with the birthday December 20th, but Digby is actually slightly younger than Isabel. Animal Crossing City Folk was the first game to introduce Festivale, and back then there was a couple of little mini games you could participate in. However, some of my favorite ones were Imaginary Soccer, and there was also like Rock, Paper, Scissors, amongst some other games. When Festivale was added for Animal Crossing New Leaf, however, they were like, nah, let's not do this imaginary soccer stuff. That's silly to do imaginary games. So then they did charades instead. Animal Crossing charades. One of the rarest Animal Crossing villagers of all time is actually this thing known as Carrot. Once again, a Japan only villager in Animal Forest E+. But to make it even more complicated, you can only get her to move into your town if you had the special E card, making it even more difficult to see this villager that never would return in an Animal Crossing game again. Also in some of the older Animal Crossing games, you could straight to play hide and seek with your villagers, something that I really wish would return. However, looking back at some of the hiding spots that they picked, um, well, I guess it makes sense why maybe it never did make a full on return. These hiding spots probably aren't the best and most secretive hiding spots I've ever seen. Dr. Shrunk's favorite food is apparently chocolate cake, in case you didn't know. In Animal Crossing City Folk Forward, if your birthday falls on leap day, February 29th, your birthday will be celebrated early and have a little bit of special dialogue flair acknowledging the fact that your birthday is on leap day during a leap year. The only other character in all of Animal Crossing to have a birthday on leap day is Luna, which is interesting because otherwise there are no regular villager type characters that have a birthday on leap day. Okay, we have some more weird ones we're gonna look at in just a second, but real quick, we don't have a sponsor for today's video, so instead we're gonna be sharing our affiliate link for Displate. Look at this awesome Animal Crossing poster that they sent me. These things are really high quality metal pieces. They're like the easiest thing in the world to set up and put on your wall because they use magnets. And there's a ton of really awesome designs. So if you're an Animal Crossing fan or you're just a fan of anything and you want some cool things to throw up on your wall, maybe consider checking out the link down below and use our discount code, which helps us and also helps you save a little bit of money too. Okay, let's get back into it. We all know that in Animal Crossing New Horizons, Daisy May was the new turnip salesperson taking over for Joan from the original 
original games. However, this was actually something that was alluded a little bit earlier on than just Animal Crossing New Horizons. In Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer for the 3DS, Joan actually alludes to wanting to retire, but isn't too sure who would take over the turnip market. Joan then makes a reference to Red, calling him that wicked fox, who apparently offered to take her place, but she makes it obvious she doesn't trust him. And according to the Animal Crossing fandom website, Joan has said some other mean things about Red the Fox really just having a dislike for him. She's claimed to booby trap her turnips from turnip nappers, say things like, like that no good fox, ooh, if I ever get a hold of him, I'll knock that sly smirk right off his snout. She'll even say like, just don't be a fox, kiddo. Okay, in a previous video, we've actually talked about how the character Pascal is named after the French mathematician Blaise Pascal, who in the 1600s essentially created some sort of calculator to measure the pressure underwater. It's a cool reference and all. However, one thing that's even more interesting is that Pascal is also an anagram of the word scallop, but like with one less L, which is interesting because of course you find underwater sea creatures and deliver them to Pascal in games like New Horizons, and he's always doing some stuff in the water in those older games. Also in Happy Home Designer for the 3DS, Celeste reveals that she can't fly, which is one of the reasons why she's so fond of stargazing. This is interesting because it does make us wonder if other bird villagers can or can't fly. Like we assume the dodos in the airport can't fly, hence the reason they fly actual airplanes and dodos obviously couldn't fly. We never see many other villagers fly at all with one exception. In the older games, we would see Pete fly when delivering mail. So we do know for a fact that some birds can fly in the Animal Crossing series. Then there's like the real birds, like the yellow bird that will be at the front of the town in New Horizons, or at night, it's replaced with an owl. But here's another interesting thing. Over on Harv's Island, there are also owls there, and those owls have more animations and move differently than the owls that you have in your main island. Why is this different? We don't know. Animal Crossing Wild World had one of the most convoluted methods for obtaining a golden axe in that specific game. This unbreakable golden axe could only be obtained if you bought a red turnip seed from Joan, planted it, and kept it watered, and then fed the red turnip to Wendell. From there, there's a couple different items that Wendell can give you, but if he gives you the turban, you hold onto that and then give it to Sahara. From there, there's a couple different items Sahara could give you, but if she gives you a massage chair, you can give the massage chair to Tortimer, who will then give you a scallop. If you take the scallop, and give it to Pascal, he will either give you a golden axe or his picture. It's a lot of work, but hey, the golden axe was completely unbreakable back then. The other Animal Crossing games definitely didn't make you go through that much work when it came to getting a golden axe. In the original GameCube version of the game, you just had to keep a perfect town for 15 days and then talk to Farley, who's inside the wishing well. In Animal Crossing City Folk, you had to throw your regular axe into the town's fountain, which would summon Serena, and there's a chance she would give you a golden axe. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, all you have to do is purchase 50 saplings from leaf and he'll give you the golden axe and in new horizons once you break an axe a hundred times in total you'll automatically learn the golden axe diy recipe for the golden fishing rod in pretty much every animal crossing game you had to catch every single type of fish before receiving it which is similar to the golden net in every animal crossing game every insect instead though in the original animal crossing game the golden shovel could only be obtained by finding one of these glowing golden spots and then burying a shovel in that spot a tree would then grow and once a tree is fully grown if you shake the tree a golden shovel will drop from it. In Wild World, all you have to do is bury a shovel and come back three days later and it'll be golden. City Folk, you just have to wait one day and undig it and it's golden. In New Leaf, you can get the golden shovel from Leaf after purchasing 50 fertilizer from his store. And in New Horizons, if you help Gulliver 30 different times, he will send you the DIY recipe for the gold shovel. For the golden slingshot in Wild World, after you've shot down a total of 14 different balloons, there's a chance that a golden balloon will fly by. You can shoot it down and get a golden slingshot that shoots three little things at a time. Similarly, after after shooting down 16 balloons in City Folk or New Leaf, a special triple gold balloon present will be flying by, and if you shoot those down in City Folk or New Leaf, you can get a gold slingshot there. And in New Horizons, after 300 balloons have been shot down, there's a chance a golden balloon will fly by. You can shoot that, and there's a DIY recipe for that inside. For the golden watering can in Wild World, after keeping your town perfect for 15 days, Pelly or Phyllis will give you the golden watering can. Similarly, in City Folk and New Leaf, a perfect town for 15 days will also get you the golden watering can, but it'll be given to you by either Tortimer or Isabel, respectively. And in Animal Crossing New Horizons, once you finally have a five-star island, Isabel will reward you with the recipe for the golden watering can as well. Still, none of these seem to be as complicated as that original Wild World Golden Axe. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, Blather's voice was a lazy villager's voice, but pitched up higher. But in New Horizons, his voice was actually changed to a slightly lower voice, that matching the same voice of a smug villager. Can you hear the difference between the two 
voices here. This isn't the only character to change voices in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Red had the voice of a lazy villager. However, in New Horizons, he actually has the voice of a sisterly villager, except pitched up a little bit, which is interesting because sisterly villagers are typically reserved for female villagers. So this one's actually a really interesting exception. Also, while we're on the topic of voices, Joan, again, coming back into relevancy here, is one of the few characters to have a completely unique voice, unlike any of the voices shared with other types of characters. <laughs> There's only a couple other characters who have completely unique voices. Farley from the original game, who was like this character nobody even remembers existed. And Luna, the character who like talks to you when you're going to like a dream suite. In Animal Crossing City Folk, occasionally a cranky villager might make a pretty brave statement claiming that Sahara's accent is actually fake and claim that they saw Sahara do stand-up comedy at the Marquee and she apparently didn't have an accent then. There's some like deep conspiracies here in Animal Crossing. Crossing, I guess. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, it's possible that if you had made a snowboy by pushing two snowballs together after they were kind of big and then they started to melt after like a day or so, occasionally a snowboy will mention that they think that they must be an alien since technically they came from the sky, which oh my gosh, this just falls into the huge alien conspiracy tinfoil hat category that we've explored many times before on this channel and at this point we just have to fully believe that aliens are just a very crucial part of the underlying world in Animal Crossing. Okay, honestly, it seems like Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer does a lot when it comes to building out the overall lore in the Animal Crossing universe, but apparently Lottie might have a little crush on Digby or something. Like, they could have a thing. It's alluded to in an emotion that Lottie does when referring to Digby, so, you know, there's another character you could ship. It's just a shame that Nintendo did Digby so badly with New Horizons. Where's Digby at? Bring him back. Lottie and and Pascal are both the same species. They're otters, but they look nothing alike at all. I mean, these look like completely different animals. Lottie and Lyle, they're related. They look similar enough, but what is going on with our boy Pascal here? There's an item in Animal Crossing New Leaf known as the Nintendo 3DS shelf, which you can put on display. Now, throughout the years, Nintendo has had a long history of putting in interesting Nintendo references in Animal Crossing games, but this one's on another level. It's actually just straight up a Nintendo 3DS display from what you would see in a store at the time. More interestingly though is if you take a closer look at the item itself and look at it you can see that there are actual video games on the shelf and upon closer inspection we're able to figure out what games are actually there. Yeah you buy this you can get The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, Style Savvy Fashion Forward, Nintendo Dogs Plus Cats, Animal Crossing New Leaf, that's I guess an obvious one, and Tamadachi life. Now, it is a little tricky to actually get this item though. You have to obtain a 10 chain combo in Animal Crossing Puzzle League, that like mini game that was in New Leaf. But if you did that, you would get it in a letter from Nintendo and it's pretty cool. The Achilles surgeon fish that you can catch in the game are a part of the Achintheridae family of fish. I hope I said that right. On the website animalcrossingportal.com, users are able to vote each month for the top villager. And in October 2022, Anka was number seven, but in June of this year, she dropped to number 12, averaging out to a normal score. I wonder why there was a random spike in popularity for this character. For the Animal Crossing Pocket Camp 2.5.1 update on July 12th, 2019, several bugs were fixed. Animal Crossing City Folk has some of the most interesting titles in other countries. So we have Animal Crossing City Folk here in the US, and then in Europe, it's called Let's Go to the City, and in Japan, it's called Let's Go to the Town, and then in Korea, it's let's visit the town. So we have everything covered here. In the Japan only Animal Crossing Plus game, Mayor's Day was changed to September 15th, which is respect for the aged day in Japan. The Animal Crossing Smash Bros stage called Smashville has 10 characters. And up until that point before New Horizons released, you were only able to name your town eight characters. So it was actually impossible to name your town Smashville in a real Animal Crossing game. During the Bright Nights event,
Event and Wild World, it is impossible for special characters like Joan and Red to appear on that day. I do wonder if that's why in my Animal Crossing 100 Days on Wild World video, there was a Sunday where I desperately was looking for Joan and I spent all this time searching up and down and couldn't find her. I wonder if that had something to do with it. During the month of July in Animal Crossing New Leaf, you're actually able to catch a total of 55 different types of bugs. Isabelle's name in Germany is Melinda and in France, it's Marie. Okay, listen to this. The Animal Crossing Wild World box art cover is actually a lie. The Able Sisters shop in the game is always directly east of Tom Nook, but on the cover, they're like all the way far apart. In the summer 2020 edition of Nintendo Magazine, a realistic looking Nook phone was featured to promote Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I just love this. There was a poll back in the day for Animal Crossing Plus for Japan to vote on the most popular and least popular Animal Crossing villager, and the least popular villager ended up being Velma, who only had a total of 17 votes. In June of 2023, some guy on eBay sold five boxes of Animal Crossing games, he had a total of 118 copies, and sold for $4,000, which I, I, is interesting, I guess. There's no pictures of the games, just the two boxes stacked on top of each other, but someone bought it. The gaming desk that's a part of the gaming set in Animal Crossing New Horizons actually includes an external number pad on the desk. In the credits of the Animal Crossing anime, you can actually see a balloon with a gift during the outdoor scenes just flying by, just like the balloons in Animal Crossing. If you're visiting a different island through the Dream Suite and travel into the airport and talk to Orville, he actually won't recognize you because you're in this like Inception dream world or something. Back when Animal Crossing City Folk first released in 2008, if you wanted to buy the City Folk bundle that came with the official We Speak microphone, it would retail for $69.99, which kind of is a lot of money for the quality of that microphone. The color code for the pink on Freya's fur is actually FF92A4 or like something like that. Okay, if you actually use the Nook Link app, there are in this app 120 different daily words of wisdom quotes from Katrina featured here for whatever reason. When Jack rolls up in his RV to the campground in Animal Crossing New Leaf Welcome Home Amiibo, you can see pumpkins on the side of his truck. This is likely a reference to the fact that his head is a pumpkin. The background track for the fish exhibit in the museum in Animal Crossing New Horizons is actually exactly one minute and 45 seconds long before it loops over again. The Animal Crossing villager Blue Bear is actually a reference to the fact that he is a blue bear. The Animal Island minigame that you can play on your Game Boy using the link cable released in the US on September 16th, 2002. The Animal Crossing e-card that was bundled with the e-reader back in the day has the code 485A 04E001 on it. In this promotional screenshot for the 1.1 update, you can see a pig villager in the background. The surgeon fish you can catch in Animal Crossing is the same species as that blue fish from that one Nemo movie. There are no owls in Dobutsu no Mori, the animal forest game for the N64. Tortimer used to have a red hat. In Animal Crossing City Folk, when you visit the surveillance center, you can actually see Mr. Rossetti without his hat. In Animal Crossing Wild World, the bug off used to be the third Sunday of June, July, August, September, and then in City Folk and New Leaf, it was the third Saturday of those months. And then in New Horizons, it became the fourth Saturday of the same months if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, or the third Saturday of January, February, November, and December if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. There are 18 designs in the Nintendo Player's Guide for Wild World that you have to recreate manually if you want to put them, but the Pikachu one's description reads, brighten up your home with this colorful portrait of the world's most famous electric rodent. It's still unknown to this day who takes a bite out of those spoiled turtles. Turnips. Inside the Happy Room Academy, there are two purple armchairs. The official Animal Crossing sticker book has over 800 stickers, so now you know. Yuka is actually the only koala villager who's managed to appear in every mainline Animal Crossing game to date. On the flip side, the koala villager Sydney almost has been in every single game to date, however for some reason wasn't in Animal Crossing Wild World for the DS, so Yuka ends up getting the crown here. Daisy May's original birthday was May 5th, but but due to a mistake on her amiibo card, they ended up having to change her birthday to March 30th for some reason. 
Okay, if you add all of the Metacritic ratings of all main Animal Crossing games together into a number, the number you end up getting is 424. There you go. Okay, listen, there's 15 penguin villagers in all of the Animal Crossing games and none of them are named Peter. In the Animal Crossing New Leaf official game guide, it says that Kix is a fox, but I mean, he's clearly a skunk here, so I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. All of the villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons who own the KK Slider song Animal City were originally introduced in Animal Crossing City Full. The Shampoodle business hours used to be from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. when Harriet was first introduced, but then in City Folk, her hours were changed again from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., just trimming two hours off the end of the day, and then in New Leaf, it was changed from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and now she just works at, like, Harv's Island, just doing her thing there. This next one's maybe a little bit of a controversial one, especially if you're an international viewer, but in Animal Crossing New Horizons, the football, this item here, is named so in both American and European English, despite Europe, in, you know, including the United Kingdom and whatnot, usually referring to the term football with this item instead, or what we call soccer here. It's likely because the United States has a larger audience and for localization in English versions of the game, even though there are European localizations with it still being the English language, I guess they chose just one over the other. But still, it's an interesting little decision that was made here that probably have some people out there really mad about it. Most of us are probably like, eh, whatever, but you know there's one guy out there who's just like losing their mind over it. Thanks Nookopedia for always having the interesting info like this. Actually, in the original Animal Crossing game, there's a desk item called the flip top desk. It's part of like the overall school theme, but the interesting thing about this desk in particularly is if you zoom in, you can see some scratching on the desk surface and it actually says Joey plus Mallory with like a heart outlining the names. Who's Joey? Who's Mallory? Well, there are two duck villagers, both of the name Joey and Mallory, so it's very possible that it's a reference to these two villagers. Who would have thought, you know? Someone went there and scratched their name in a heart. I don't know if it was Joey or Mallory, but one of them definitely did it. In the North American versions of the older Animal Crossing games, specifically the games prior to Animal Crossing New Horizons, there was a special little Groundhog's Day celebration on February 2nd of every year featuring Mr. Rossetti, which was cool because, you know, Mr. Rossetti is everyone's favorite groundhog, I guess. I think he's technically a mole. It was actually kind of funny. They played into this in the original Animal Crossing game where Mr. Rossetti makes an appearance reluctantly agreeing to be the quote unquote groundhog, even though he's clearly a mole. And after an update later on in Animal Crossing New Horizons, they did at the very least add a Mr. Rossetti model into the store that players could put for Groundhog's Day. Actually, originally with Animal Animal Crossing New Horizons, Mr. Rossetti was mostly nowhere to be seen at all in the game. This led a lot of people to speculate, where did he go? And eventually they elaborated on it before the game released, stating that Mr. Rossetti was laid off from his original job, but had a new job with the Rescue Services, which of course is the voice we hear whenever we have to call for Rescue Services. It's clearly Mr. Rossetti, the music's the same, the voice sounds the same, but to an extent people still missed seeing this dude around for nostalgia's sake. There was one small appearance though you could could get to see Mr. Rossetti if you were playing New Horizons, which was a clever callback, but if you were playing online and your game abruptly disconnected, the error message would have a little Mr. Rossetti in the bottom corner of the screen, which is smart because disconnecting in an online game doesn't save everything correctly a lot of the times, and it's a clever nod because it kind of is the only way you can like stop something that just happened in their game from happening is doing a quick reset while you're connected online, like if someone's coming to your island and they try to like scam you or steal some stuff or something. As long as you beat that auto save function, you're good to go at making it like it never happened, but you'll still see that little error message with Mr. Rossetti. Acknowledgement of Mr. Rossetti would come to New Horizons over time, like we said, you would get the Groundhog Day mole model or whatever, but eventually with the Animal Crossing 2.0 update, you could scan an amiibo figure, and Mr. Rossetti has one, and he would come and visit you in the roost, which at least we can finally see what this dude's been up to after all this time. Now there have been some claims that the voice when you are doing the rescue services might actually change from the voice of Mr. Rossetti 
and resemble more of that of Don, Mr. Rossetti's brother from the older games, which would also be a really clever callback if it's true, though I haven't seen it happen to myself just yet. And just in case you were dying for more useless Rossetti facts, in Animal Forest for the Nintendo 64 that only released in Japan, Mr. Rossetti looked a little bit different. He uh, had like just an all white shirt and didn't have the blue overalls just yet until the revisions of the game came out on the GameCube. In the original Animal Crossing game for the GameCube, there were 70 songs that KK Slider had and that he could perform. And over the years, more songs would be added. And by the 2.0 update of New Horizons, KK Slider now has 107 songs. Also, KK Slider's birthday is August 23rd, which is the same day as Kasumi Totaka, the Animal Crossing sound designer that KK Slider is based off of. There was even some controversy back in Animal Crossing Wild World surrounding KK Slider, surprisingly. In the game, he would say something along the lines of, those industry fat cats try to put a price on my music, but it wants to be free. And this actually gained notoriety on various news websites as it was believed to promote illegal file sharing, which was, you know, during the time where like people downloading and stealing music on websites like LimeWire and FrostWire was like the biggest deal and like the biggest crime you could commit. So with that being said, Nintendo of America's vice president of corporate affairs at the time, Perrin Kaplan, made a statement in regards to what KK Slider said in Wild World, saying that his quote does not reflect the views of the company, only that he is a free spirit who cannot be bought and sold for any amount of money. <laughs> what a time to be alive. There were only four characters in all of Animal Crossing who don't have officially known birthdays out of the entire franchise history. These characters are Frillard, Serena, Farley, and Caitlin, the mother of that lost cat that you can help out that we talked about earlier in this video. In the Animal Crossing universe, there are two Toms. We have Tom and Tom Nook. There are also two cherries, one with an I and one with the letter Y instead. Out of all of the paintings in Animal Crossing, sometimes the art pieces have some weird things that can happen with them, but apparently the wistful painting might actually be a little bit very much so haunted. Some users have noticed when playing Animal Crossing at night that all of a sudden the wistful painting's eyes will mysteriously be closed. That's terrifying. Marshall is a villager that has the catchphrase Tecuin, which may be a Spanish reference or an Aztec reference to the term Tecuan. I know my pronunciation is awful of that, I apologize. Which roughly translates to beast. So that's cool, Marshall. Way to be hip. On April Fool's Day in the original Animal Crossing game, there's a chance that Blathers might say that a fossilized alien life form was donated to the museum from the planet April Fool. I hate this, Blathers. You know I was ready to just throw on my tinfoil hat again and go all in about the alien conspiracy theory in Animal Crossing, but you had to fool us there. Does anyone ever notice kangaroo villagers being a thing? It's always a little odd that kangaroo villagers will also have like a small child that mimics exactly what the mother villager is saying, unless it's awkwardly the other way around. Male kangaroo villagers don't carry around a baby kangaroo though. Okay, we talked about the golden tools, but what about silver tools? Yeah, these are actually a thing in some of the older games. Now, a lot of the times you could just buy the silver tools from a store, or if you're lucky, you could throw an ax into the fountain where Serena is, and there's a chance you can get a gold or silver ax. But yeah, they were just slightly better versions of the non-gold tools. In the older Animal Crossing games, there was actually an event known as the Harvest Moon Festival or the Autumn Moon, which would take place in the fall, but essentially takes place on the date where the full moon is closest to the fall equinox. The way you could participate in the event varied from game to game, but in general, the moon would look pretty big. Katrina the Fortune Teller is a pretty interesting character in the original Animal Crossing games. She just had like a tent and you could go in the tent and get your fortune read and it would impact some things in the game. However, in City Folk, she actually got a dedicated building right there in the town. Then when New Leaf rolled around, she was downgraded back to a tent again, but eventually would get her building back in the little Main Street area eventually if you played enough. And then in New Horizons, she was mostly absent until the 2.0 update when she finally does get at least a little setup over on Harv's Island. One thing that not too many people think about is the fact that in Animal Crossing, the Nook phone that you have is actually probably way more powerful than any of us actually think about. You can straight up take this phone with you into the ocean and it works just fine. You can pull it out and use it, which means it's likely waterproof. There's been a lot of speculation in the Animal Crossing community over who exactly CJ is, but it is possible that his name is an abbreviation for Chip Jr., which would suggest that CJ is 
the son of Chip from the previous Animal Crossing games. Besides some dialogue things that they both say and the similarities, there was a lot of speculation for a long time in the Animal Crossing community until the release of the 2.0 Animal Crossing update that confirmed Chip was in fact CJ's father when visited at the roost. Don Rossetti may have his name be a subtle reference to the phrase don't reset, something I think is very clever. In Japanese culture, tapirs are said to eat dreams, and this might be one of the reasons why Luna, why Luna was the character chosen to be in charge of all of the dream traveling done in the game. This is similar to other types of Japanese characters in this regard, like the Pokemon Drowsy and Hypno from the Pokemon series. We talked about Serena a bit, but Serena and the whole process of getting the axes that are special by throwing an axe in is actually a reference to a really interesting fable that's been around for a long time known as the Honest Woodman. There's a lot of different versions of the story, but traditionally the story follows a woodcutter who accidentally loses his axe into a river and it was the man's only livelihood, so it was like a really big deal he lost it. And then either a god dives in or a mermaid, depending on where you're reading the story, and returns with a cooler and better golden axe being like, hey, is this what you lost? But the dude's like, nah, that ain't my axe. Even though he really could use that golden axe, of course. The mermaid also does it with a silver axe. He's like, nah, that ain't my axe. And then the mermaid comes with the real axe. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that is the axe that was mine. And the moral of the story is because he was so honest, the mermaid rewarded him by also gifting those two other axes to him. And I guess in this story, Serena is the god or mermaid and you get an axe but just one. Since the beginning of Animal Crossing, for every calendar day that exists, there is an Animal Crossing villager with that day as their birthday. For instance, my birthday is December 25th, and I have the villager Ruby who shares that birthday, which means that your real life birthday probably has a villager that also shares that birthday. So if you don't know what day it is, you should definitely go check it out and then leave a comment down below with what villager shares your birthday if you want to. But more importantly, make sure you subscribe with notifications on if you enjoyed this video. We've also done 20 minutes of Animal Crossing useless facts when we first started this channel. It's definitely worth checking out if you want this just to keep on going and you can learn even more interesting and useless things. We do all sorts of stuff Animal Crossing related here, so if you're not subscribed to notifications on, make sure you become subscribed. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching. That's it for today. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.